remember that tweet from Jordan Peterson that I made a video about where I said, hey, the mask is off, where he was trying to be as caustic as he possibly could? Yeah, he was suspended yesterday on Twitter over it. And they won't give him his account back unless he deletes the tweet. And he's taking a stance and not deleting it. And he's throwing a big tantrum over it. Hello, everyone. A few days ago, I penned an irritated tweet in response to one of the latest happenings on the increasingly heated culture war front. In response to the decision of an actress, actor... You just couldn't resist, could you? ...named Ellen Elliot Page. Yeah, if they would have changed their name for any other reason than their gender, you would have been decent enough to call them that name first. But you're making sure, you're making sure that you dead name them on purpose. You know what you're doing. You know exactly what you're doing. I am employing this awkward and impossible naming style because it is now apparently mandatory and am probably doing it wrong. Right, wrong, I don't know. It depends on the narrative you're trying to present. You know what you're doing, though. You know exactly what you're doing. You are not stupid, Jordan. Nonetheless, as you're doing it wrong is the whole point of what has been made mandatory. But also, I'm trying to make a point. I've essentially been banned from Twitter as a consequence. I say banned, although technically I have been suspended. But the suspension will not be lifted unless I delete the hateful tweet in question, and I would rather die than do that. You'd rather die than delete a purposely controversial tweet. And hopefully it will not come to that, although who the hell knows in these increasingly strange days. Man, you sure love to grift. What was it that I said that caused such a fuss? And that fuss is just beginning. And even more importantly, and complexly, what exactly was it that I said that resulted in the ban? Here's the tweet in question. Remember when pride was a sin? And Ellen Page just had her breasts removed by a criminal physician. And then a link to a story that detailed out the happenings. The response from Twitter, quote, Violating our rules against hateful conduct. You may not promote violence against, threaten, or harass other people on the basis of race, ethnicity, national origin, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, religious affiliation, age, disability, or serious disease. By clicking delete, you acknowledge that your tweet violated the Twitter rules. Delete. If you think we've made a mistake, Submit an appeal to us. Please note that, should you do so, your account will remain locked while we review your appeal. Let's take this apart. First, it is clearly the case that I did not promote violence against or threaten anyone with my missive. So that leaves the arguably lesser sin of harass. Let's assume, since I wasn't informed, that that was the crime. One of the most irritating things possible is when someone really smart pretends to be really stupid. And further, harassment on the basis of so-called gender identity. So-called gender identity? Is that how pig-headed you are about this? Since Twitter did not do me the favor of actually specifying my crime and there are many possibilities on that front. We unfortunately have to guess at why this has occurred. And no, you don't. No, you don't. Y you know what you said. You know that what you said was caustic. You knew that you were saying the most offensive thing you possibly could in as few words as possible. And you're going to pretend to not understand? Dude, you're not stupid. This, this is very frustrating. That's actually a big problem in and of itself and also indicative of the utter carelessness of the Twitter organization with regard to the propriety of its own sensorial actions. You know what their rules are. You agreed to those rules. Okay, I'm not saying their rules are a good thing, but you knew what their rules were. Stop playing stupid, man. You're not an idiot. 
Or maybe you are. Maybe you really are stupid in everywhere other than psychology. I should at least know exactly what I did wrong if I am required to acknowledge that my tweet violated the Twitter rules. And now we're going to do William Shatner imitations. What rules, you sons of bitches? Exactly. Ooh, me angry now. Precisely. Because such things matter when the accusations start flying. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. So what did I say that might constitute harassment? Well, many things, hypothetically. <laughs> so you know, but you're going to pretend that you don't know. Let's begin with, remember when pride was a sin? Although that is merely a factual statement, because under the old rules, applicable even a decade ago, pride was a sin. You're using a biblical definition of pride that the people at the pride fests and the pride month is not using. You know this, though. You know this. You can't be that stupid. And had been recognized as perhaps the cardinal's sin for thousands of years previously. I mean, considering that you view the Bible as the book, and if you if you look up the history of the Bible, then then it's the history of of books in general. It's the book. Yeah, I mean, the rubbish that you said in a Joe Rogan interview. Yeah, considering that you put that much weight into the Bible, then then I then perhaps maybe you you really can't look at things any differently. It still might be regarded as unacceptable to the woke authoritarian moralists who now insist, for example, that we celebrate Pride Month, not hour or day or week, but month. Look, I agree, and I think a lot of people agree, even those in the LGBT community, a lot of them agree that having a whole month is overkill, and having all these corporations' virtue signal is overkill, and it, it might be detrimental to the movement. And to have literally called it Pride Month, instead of LGBT Plus Month, or whatever else alphabet acronym which is currently insisted upon as the only acceptable enlightened terminology. Look, a lot of people, including those within the community, are tired of there being continual letters added to the whole thing, right? Uh, fine, but your main concern is about pride, and you're using a biblical definition of pride to apply it to something using a completely different definition. I don't regard pride as a virtue. It has been classically regarded as a sin. So you want to make sure that you associate the LGBT community with sin. I don't see that sexual orientation or sexual desire of any sort is something to celebrate or to take pride in. And so what I said was merely a fact. No, what you said was you inserting your religious definition of pride and applying it to the gay community, applying it to the LGBT community, and declaring that the LGBT community is sinful. You're like, you're like one of those pastors saying that God doesn't approve. God thinks that you're going to burn in hell for eternity because that's what, when you shove forth that something is a sin, that's what you're essentially saying. You're not being any different than these pastors going around preaching to gay people that they're going to burn in hell for eternity. Now, it's possible that I hurt someone's feelings. So when a preacher says that homosexuality will make people burn in hell for eternity, is that something that is just potentially hurting someone's feelings, or is there a deeper element to it? Because I pointed out that pride goes before, for example, a fall. Well, I mean, you're pushing the notion that if we accept the LGBT community, if we accept them being prideful, then that means that we're about to fall. Our society is about to fall apart just because we accepted the LGBT people. That's what you're insinuating in what you're saying. That's why, that's why you were so careful in the way that you worded it. You wanted to be as caustic as you possibly could in as few words as possible. And you achieved your goals, but now you're going to complain about the ramifications of it. But I don't care about that. Would do it again. And also consider it my duty to warn those who are about to fall into a pit. Will they really fall into a pit? 
or are you just suggesting that they are because of your biblical, how everything for you revolves around the Bible? You look at everything through the lens of the Bible. That the path they are on leads suddenly downhill. But that was probably not the reason that I was banned from Twitter, although, as I said, I am in the position of having to guess. Next phrase to interrogate. And Ellen Page. Now, why did I stop there? Because you're dead naming him? Because in all likelihood, it was this seemingly innocuous phrase. Dude, you are not stupid. Stop trying to play stupid. As I said earlier, if, I mean, my name used to be Brandon Fowler. Now it's Kazum Fowler. I had my name changed in 2014. Now, if you knew that my name was changed to Kazum Fowler, would you go around constantly calling me Brandon Fowler? I mean, if you knew me for years before I had my name changed, okay, that's fine. You have an excuse. It's, it's habit, right? But if it's not habit, you're doing this on purpose. You're trying to be caustic. You're trying to be mean. And you, again, you probably would call someone a different name if the reason why they changed their name wasn't because of gender. Stop playing stupid. Including the name of a well-known actress, there I'm in trouble again, that likely resulted in my ban. I committed the fatal crime of what has come to be known in the appalling sensorial terminology of the insane activists as dead naming. Yes, and you did it deliberately, purposely, purposefully. Which is the act of referring to someone who has transitioned, another hated piece of jargon and slogan. Well, it's obviously jargon you absolutely hate because you hate a lot of things. By the name and by the inference, the gender, really the sex, that everyone knew them by previously. I get it. You reject the entire notion of gender being different than sex. You reject anything related to trans people. You, you, you reject the entire notion. Okay, now, maybe that doesn't translate directly to hating those people. But to those people, you're rejecting their even existence. And in the case of Ellen slash Elliot, that millions of people recognized and knew. Yes, but you knew that they were transitioning. You knew that they had a medical procedure done. You know what they refer to themselves as. You know what their name is now. You know that they refer to themselves as he, but you went out of your way to be nasty. And then you're, you're acting surprised? So I should have either called him, her, they, Elliot, instead of Ellen. Yes, but apparently you'd rather die than call someone a different name. Although, as we will discover, that would have made it impossible for me to say what I wanted to and need to say in the remaining phrases. Not that such a problem would bother those who are objecting to my speech in the first place. The next phrase is, just had her breasts removed. This bit suffers from a very similar problem. I employed the forbidden pronoun her when Elliot, Ellen, is now to be regarded as a he or else. Or else you get your account suspended for violating their rules. You knew what their rules were. You knew what you were into, man. Stop playing stupid. But there's a conundrum here, to say the least, and not just for me, although I have been banned because of it. No, you were suspended, and you'd get your account back if you deleted that tweet. Was Elliot slash Ellen a she or a he or Ellen or Elliot when she or he or they? Oh, you're just so confused. It's so confusing. That's Elliot or Elian, by the way, had his or her or their breasts removed. If he or she was a he, then why was it necessary to have the mastectomy? It's really not that confusing, man. And how could those I'm writing to make sense of what I was saying if it was his breasts that were removed? Were those male breasts or female breasts that were removed? You knew the rules. You caused controversy. Now you're whining because there were consequences for your statements. Okay? 
All you have to do is delete the tweet and everything is fine. But you'd rather die. So, okay, dude. If they were male breasts, then why were they removed? If they were female breasts and had therefore become objectionable to the degree that surgery generally reserved for cancer treatment was required, was morally obligatory, then wasn't Elliot still Ellen and he still she? Who cares? You just wanted to start some controversy and now, now you're getting all this attention. You're getting all this attention from this video. All these people are going to keep praising you like they normally do. How could I possibly have written that sentence in any sensible manner whatsoever while simultaneously making my point understandably? Are you ready for this? Ready? Ready? It's a point you can't make on Twitter. You can't say it on Twitter. It doesn't matter how nicely you say it. Just like it doesn't matter how nicely you tell people that they're going to burn in hell for eternity. It doesn't matter how nice you are about it. It doesn't matter if you put smiley faces there. It doesn't matter. Okay? It's something you can't say on Twitter. They have rules. You know what the rules are. Then you broke the rules and then you're acting all offended so you can get attention. And not breaking Twitter rules against so-called hateful conduct. Uh, <laughs> It's so confusing. <laughs> and Elliot Page just had his breasts removed? Yes, you're not stupid. Was he Elliot then? When exactly? Exactly. You know, maybe you should develop the Tucker Carlson confused face, right? He was definitely Ellen at some point in the past or so indicate all his, her, them, their film credits. Will all those have to be reshot since they employed the hated dead name? None of this is helping you, man. You're just playing stupid and you're not stupid. That doesn't exist, by the way, that dead name category, except in the sensorial and addled minds of a tiny fraction of insanely narcissistic and increasingly dangerous trans activists. Well, again, as I said, if there was someone who changed their name for any other reason than their gender, you would probably grant them calling them the name they wish to be called. But because, just because, it has to do with gender, you refuse. As you say, you would rather die. And it's really pathetic, man. When precisely was it incumbent on me to switch my terminology in regard to Elliot slash Ellen so that I was not engaging in hateful conduct. Call them the name they wish to be called? You already know it. They, they had surgery. You know what's going on. Stop playing stupid, man. You're not stupid. Maybe your, maybe your psychophants are stupid and they'll, they'll defend you at every... I'm sure I'm going to get tons of hate comments on this video and it'll probably get a whole bunch of thumbs downs and that's fine and how can i describe the fact that someone who was once a woman and really still is look maybe you don't view what you've just said as hateful okay you you deny anything trans related you deny it all you don't accept any of it you reject all of it you reject it like an atheist's rejects the notion of God. Okay? You reject it all. Okay, fine. But know that a lot of people view it as hateful. It's, it's like you're saying that they don't exist. Okay? Come on, man. Had her breasts cut off because she, he, they, their, them. Maybe you should add an it in there just, just to, you know, make it a little bit more caustic had fallen prey to a viciously harmful fad without using the appropriate sex link pronoun and the real name of the real person. So according to you, Kazoom isn't my real name. It's really Brandon because, you know, if, if I had it changed, a, a name change isn't valid. So maybe you should call all people their, by their maiden name too, right? Is, is that what you're going to do? To whom this was really done with his, her, their voluntary but unfortunate acquiescence. And so it was impossible to communicate what had happened to my audience without apparently running afoul of the impossible and absurd rules that now hypothetically govern morality itself. <laughs> Twitter rules, rules on a website for conduct is now about morality itself. 
Come on, man. In the days of the degenerated postmodern and Marxist ethos that we must still, no matter how impossible it is, abide by or else. And you might object, Alan slash Elliot is an adult, 30 something, and fully capable of making up his, her, their. Again, don't forget to add it just to be a little bit more caustic, right? Own mind about such things. And she, he, they are welcome from the liberal and the libertarian position to go to hell in a handbasket as she, he, they see fit. And fair enough, to some degree. But I don't believe it is either merely picayune or inappropriate to point out that Ellen slash Elliot, who is quite a good actor slash actress, is also a ritual model for emulation. So basically your argument, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, this is what can be extrapolated out of what you've said here, is that trans people shouldn't be role models. Being a star with all the privileges and, let us point out, the responsibilities that go along with that. So by acquiescing to this surgery and by publicizing it, and by insisting upon the sanctity and the moral virtue of his, her, their new, expensive, dangerous, and medically enhanced identity, and by participating in the whole identity charade, Alan slash Elliot has undoubtedly, with his, her, their so-called courage, and remember the White House itself has tweeted out every indication of believing in the courage of those who transition, because apparently it doesn't take any courage to transition because you think it's wrong to begin with enticed many a poor confused adolescent girl most likely to blame her emergent pubescent self-consciousness confusion and discomfort on being born in the wrong body and believing that the courageous self-affirming and morally admirable root is hormonal treatment sterilization subjugation to a lifetime of expensive medical complication how delightfully profitable is that and misery look i don't think gender ideology should be introduced in elementary school okay i'm against that notion okay but that's not the same thing as as suggesting that people who are trans shouldn't be role models which is what you're suggesting here and i believe firmly that ellen slash elliot or whatever the hell her name or his name is. I mean, damn, you're so pissy about it. Bears moral culpability for that. And finally, with regard to the final phrase, criminal physician, I must say that I've had some post-coital, so to speak, regrets about that phrase. It is clearly the case that the surgical operation performed by the butchers who butchered Elliot slash Ellen was legal. So, was it criminal or not? Were the operations undertaken by the fascist physicians who carried out the Nazi medical experiments legal? Now you're comparing doctors who perform gender assignment surgery with Nazis. Yes, under the laws of the time. But were they criminal? I'll leave that question up to you to answer. Well, you said it, and you knew what you were doing when you said it, and you've made the claim that you would rather die than not say it, so... And further, perhaps it might be objected, what about the damage done by hypothetically leaving those confused about their identity to dwell in their confusion? Aren't we morally obliged to intervene? And I would say, no. Why? Well, first, do no harm as the Hippocratic Oath, remember that, insists. And second, it has been a matter of historical consensus that sins of omission are less egregious than sins of commission. Thus, leaving someone with gender dysphoria, no matter how warranted, and perhaps it is in a very tiny minority of truly unfortunate cases, to suffer the consequences of the theoretical mismatch between soul and body, so now you're mixing religious concepts into it with soul. It's less of a risk ethically, personally, socially, and philosophically than the extremely active intervention that constitutes so-called gender confirming, another hated phrase, surgery. I might also point out that the trans surgery enterprise 
is now a $300 million per annum growth industry, rate of projected expansion 15% per year, projected increase by 2027 to $750 million per year. An expanding enterprise in a time of global uncertainty. That's one of the few fair things you've said in this video, bringing up the fact that there's an industry behind this. Time to invest both in the requisite surgical skills and perhaps in any industry associated with this vicious and unconscionable fad, primarily entangling, as such things so often do, the youthful and female. The fad part of this is definitely worrisome. Isn't that a concern, intersectionalists? Not when push comes to shove or ideology to scalpel. Is that not a true moral hazard? And I'm not taking down that tweet or acknowledging that my tweet violated the Twitter rules. Because in that respect, you're kind of like Trump. You're very childish. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. This whole thing was you trying to get attention. All you'd have to do is delete that tweet and there'd be no problem. But you'd rather die, right? <laughs> Twitter's a rat hole in the final analysis, and I have probably contributed to that while trying to use, understand, and master that horrible, toxic platform. If that's really that hard for you to figure out, then there are obviously some areas that you're as dumb as a box of bricks. No doubt, I owe some apologies for that, and I'm trying to learn, but it's a relief in some real sense to be banned. No, it's not, because you wouldn't have made this video and you wouldn't have been so angry. Okay, you're trying to get attention and it's working. Congratulations. And I regard it under the present conditions as a badge of honor. And that right there is proof that it's just a big PR stunt. Congratulations.